Morning everyone, welcome to another Compliance Over Coffee. And this morning we're going to talk about who pays a sourcing agent and when. Really, really key information as far as you're concerned because the key element of starting a business is to earn cash. And you want to know who's going to pay you and when they're going to pay you. So who pays you first? It can be either the buyer or the seller. Um, it depends on how the deal is structured. Now, we have worked in both ways. We've had it in the main where the buyer pays our fees. And we've also had a couple of deals, land development deals structured, where actually it was the seller, to all intents and purposes, who paid our fees. So let me cover that first before we talk about the buyer. We had some land development deals and we agreed with the seller the price that they wanted for it. And we stated to them, are you happy if the buyer pays more than what you're happy with? And that is our sourcing fee. And they agreed. And that was how we structured the deal. So it meant that when the buyer paid the money to their solicitor, they passed it on to, they passed on the amount on to the seller's solicitor for the actual purchase. And the other money was held in the buyer's solicitor's account as our fee. Now, it is frowned upon if you are making tens of thousands of pounds that way. I will tell you that now for nothing. Uh, and quite often these are called back-to-back -back deals and HMRC do not like them. They consider them to be high risk of money laundering. Now, we weren't money laundering. and At the time that we did it, it was some years ago before HMRC took over actually the money laundering regulations. So a seller can pay your fee. You could structure it that you agree with them to pay your fee upon purchase if that is what you wanted to do. However, the vast majority of cases for sourcing agents, the buyer pays the fee. So when do they pay your fee? Some sourcing agents take a fee up front. And you know, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, throat's gone. You know that I say that if you take a fee up front and you state it's refundable, it has to be held in a client's account, which are incredibly difficult to get at the moment. If you take a fee up front and say that it is deductible, it doesn't have to be held in the client's account. It's just deductible from the end fee, which is how Tony and I work. But you get paid upon completion. How do you ensure that you get paid? The key thing is to understand that the way to get paid is to have the buyer's solicitor pay you directly as part of what's known as the disbursements. What are they? It's when they have received the money from the buyer to pay everything and everyone, um, searches, stamp duty, the purchase price, the solicitor's fees, any other fees that the solicitor has, has um, run up, and also your sourcing fee. If you think about it, a high street estate agent gets paid through the seller's solicitor as the agent. The agent's fees are taken and in full and then paid by the solicitor. Yours are just done through the buyer's solicitor. So how do you do that? You make sure that your buyer introduces you to their solicitor as their agent at the very beginning of your relationship. And when they have signed a terms of business agreement with you and when they sign the deal agreement form that they're purchasing a deal, you forward those CCing your buyer in to inform the solicitor that this is a deal that has been agreed and these are the terms of payment. They will then instruct the buyer how much money has to be paid into their account. That's the buyer solicitor account before they will proceed to exchange and completion. If there isn't enough money in the account to cover all fees required and the purchase, they won't proceed and the buyer won't get the deal. If you don't work that way and you wait to invoice the buyer after the deal is completed, they may go to the hills and not pay your fee. And that is how an awful lot of deal sources don't get paid. So structure it and be clear right from the word go with your investor that it's their solicitor that will be paying your fee as part of the disbursements and they will have to make sure that all the cash that is required to complete that deal goes to their solicitor and then the solicitor must be aware of you and your fees to be able to pay you. So that is who pays you and that is when you get paid. I hope that was helpful. 
That's another compliance over coffee over with. Where is this year going? Tony is now on countdown to Christmas. Help me. <laughs> we'll be running another compliance over coffee next Thursday. Usual time, 8.30 in the morning. If you've got any topics at all that you would like me to cover, please bob them in the chat box underneath. We do run free webinars each month which are free to attend and are full of content. And after this call, Tony will put the link in for you to reserve a place on the next webinar. They're always on Thursdays, I think, and between seven and eight, and we try to keep it to the hour. They are not recorded. You have to attend live. So that's it for this morning. Bye from me. I don't think we're gonna get much sunshine where we are in the Northwest this weekend, but wherever you are, I hope you get a little bit of sunshine and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye for now.